Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and today we're continuing the last Tyrant lore series, featuring Dong Zhuo, with episode 4, titled Lord Shi and Lord Dong. So we ended our last episode with Dong Zhuo entering the capital with the child emperor Liu Bian and his younger brother Liu Xie after quote-unquote rescuing them from being kidnapped by the escaped eunuch Zhang Rang. But instead of picking up our story from here, we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about these two kids, since they will play a huge role in the story to come. First off, allow me to introduce the 12th emperor of the Eastern Han Dynasty in Liu Bian. Now, Liu Bian, being the oldest son to the late emperor Liu Hong, was just 13 years old when he ascended to the throne. Although never officially declared heir by his father, Liu Bian was crowned with the help of his mother, Empress He, following his father's death. And speaking of his mother, Empress He's rise from being a butcher's daughter to becoming the Empress of China depended entirely on Liu Bian's birth. When Empress He first joined the imperial palace, she was a mere servant girl. But luckily for her, Emperor Liu Hong found her attractive enough to grace her, and from their union, Liu Bian was born. At the time of Liu Bian's birth, Emperor Liu Hong had no surviving sons, as all his prior male heirs had died young. So the superstitious emperor believed a foul curse was plaguing the palace. And to prevent a similar fate befalling on the young Liu Bian, Emperor Liu Hong secretly summoned his personal Taoist monk named Shi Zimiao to bring the young prince away from the palace. And under secrecy, Shi Zimiao was ordered to raise the future heir of China in a Taoist temple near the capital. And as Liu Bian grew up in this temple, Shi Zimiao had a huge dilemma on his hand as he was unsure what to call the young prince. Since raising the prince outside the palace was top secret, he can't refer to him by his title or even use his real surname of Liu. So to protect this secret, he nicknamed the young prince as Lord Shi and used his own last name to reduce any superstition from anyone around. And that name ended up sticking to Liu Bian as he grew up. So that's why his background title in the game is Lord Shi. Now, at the same time, because of Liu Bian's birth and status as the sole heir to the empire, his mother, the servant girl He, is now promoted to concubine He. Now, she wasn't empress right away because at the time there was already an empress named Empress Song, who was the daughter of the captain of the capital city guards. However, because Empress Song never produced any heirs, Everyone in the palace knew that eventually, when Liu Bian would inherit the throne, concubine He would end up becoming the Empress Dowager. So many of the eunuchs inside the palace started to butter her up to get on her good side. And as time went on, concubine He and the eunuch's relationship would grow into an alliance. And through this alliance, concubine He was able to frame Empress Song of practicing witchcraft against the emperor and prince Liu Bian, as Empress Song's personal eunuch would plant false evidence inside her chambers. This no doubt angered the superstitious emperor Liu Hong greatly, and Empress Song was immediately stripped of her titles and locked in an isolated chamber where she would die of depression within a year. And with Empress Song out of the way, concubine He would rise to become Empress He as we know her in the game. But while life seemed to be going great for Empress He and Liu Bian, fate has an odd sense of justice as Emperor Liu Hong would find a new affection in Lady Wang, who would soon give birth to Liu Hong's second son, Liu Xie, who is four years younger than Liu Bian. At this time, instead of sending Liu Xie out of the palace like Liu Bian, Emperor Liu Hong kept Liu Xie close by as he spent most of his time with Lady Wang and baby Liu Xie. This clearly enraged and threatened Empress He, who now saw both Lady Wang and Liu Xie as threats to her son's position as the future heir. 
especially since Lady Wang comes from a much more respected clan with family members in the imperial court. So she hatched up another plan with the eunuchs as she poisoned Lady Wang's drink and killed her in secret. And even though Emperor Liu Hong suspected that it was Empress He's doing, he had no solid proof and he wasn't willing to air out the dirty laundry of the imperial palace to the whole empire by banishing yet another empress so soon after the banishment of Empress Song. So Liu Hong decided that the best way to punish Empress He was to not name Liu Bian officially as heir, while giving Liu Xie, who is now motherless, over to Liu Hong's own mother, Empress Dowager Dong, to raise. So this guaranteed that Empress He would not be able to touch Liu Xie as Empress Dowager Dong outranks her. And because Empress Dowager Dong ended up raising Liu Xie, Liu Xie would end up gaining the nickname of Lord Dong, much like how Liu Bian was nicknamed Lord Shi because the Taoist monk Shi Zimiao had raised him growing up. And perhaps fate is fickle after all, as Empress He's act to secure her own son's future now backfires as Liu Xie grows up to be a very smart kid, which only helped solidify Emperor Liu Hong's opinion to pass the throne on to the younger Liu Xie. But such an act broke away with traditions and custom of the time, as the oldest son had the right to inheritance, and no one at court was willing to support Liu Hong's plan. And it also didn't help that during the Yellow Turban Rebellion, Liu Hong had given over the control of the imperial army to He Jin, who was Empress He's brother. So the only people he could turn to was once again his eunuchs. But this time, instead of going to the older and more powerful ten eunuchs led by Zhang Rang, Liu Hong turned to a younger generation of eunuchs as he tried to form his own personal army called the Eight Guards of the West Palace. Now, I'm not going to dive too deep into this army, as we have spent considerable amount of time in our Fall of the Han lore series, talking about the formation and the makeup of this force. And if you want to refresh your memory or learn more about it for the first time, please go check out our episode 13 of the Fall of the Han lore series for reference about this armed force. But at the end of the day, all these maneuvers by Emperor Liu Hong failed, as his health rapidly deteriorated in the spring of 189. And by April, he was dead at the age of 33, leaving behind two young sons aged 13 and 9. And since Liu Hong never officially named an heir prior to his death, Empress He, who now ascends to become Empress Dowager, named her son Liu Bian to the throne. And this move was very much applauded by the whole court as it followed customs and tradition. And even though the leader of the eight guards of the West Palace tried to make a move against Empress He and her brother He Jin to follow the late emperor's will, the older and more powerful ten eunuchs, who were friendly with the empress, spoiled their plan as they told the He clan ahead of time and He Jin was able to eliminate the eunuch leaders of the eight guards and take control of the entire force before any actions could be taken. So Liu Bian officially becomes the emperor, and Liu Xie was given the honorary title of Prince of Bohai, and life returned to normal in the capital for the time being. Until, as we all know, the relationship between the Ten Eunuchs and He Jin would fracture to the point where the Ten Eunuchs would move to assassinate He Jin, which prompted the likes of Yuan Shao and Cao Cao to retaliate by storming the court to avenge He Jin's death. And this chaos inside the palace and the capital will ultimately push Zhang Rang to kidnap the child emperor and his younger brother to escape to the countryside. And originally, Zhang Rang's plan was to kidnap Empress He as well, but Lu Zhi, who was at court that day, ran into their group as they tried to drag the Empress from the palace, so they were forced to abandon the Empress and escape with just the two kids. And because Lu Zhi saw the abduction, he was also able to summon General Min Gong, who had a very small force near the capital to go off searching for the Emperor, 
as most of the other armed forces within the capital were busy seeking revenge for their former commander, Grand Commandant He Jin's death. And Ming Gong's small force was indeed the first one to be able to catch up to the eunuchs and reach the emperor on the banks of the Yellow River, as Zhang Rang saw his time was finally up, as he calmly bid farewell to the child emperor and jumped into the raging Yellow River below, plunging to his death. And Ming Gong was able to rescue the emperor and try to return to the capital, but unfortunately, Dong Zhuo's force of over 5,000 Xilang cavalry were waiting for them, as they found them soon after. And the fate of these two kids will change forever, as Dong Zhuo will step into the power vacuum within the capital following He Jin's death and take control of the empire. And on their ride back to the capital, Dong Zhuo tried to converse with the child emperor Liu Bian about the conditions inside the capital and the events that led them to being abducted. But Liu Bian was so scared that all he could do was sob and cry as he was unable to form coherent sentences. In comparison, Liu Xie who was riding alongside them, was unfazed and was able to clearly articulate to Dong Zhuo about the events of the past few days and explain the situation inside the capital. And this impressed Dong Zhuo immensely, as he also felt a natural connection to Liu Xie, as Liu Xie was nicknamed Lord Dong, which is the same surname as Dong Zhuo. So from that very first meeting, Dong Zhuo started to formulate a plan to replace Emperor Liu Bian, with Liu Xie, and it is this plan that will ultimately create the friction between Dong Zhuo and the scholars of the imperial court that will end up forcing Dong Zhuo to extreme and cruel measures to get his way. And we're going to see all this in action in our very next episode, so hope you guys enjoyed this episode here, and see you all next time. Bye!